Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. My first project today is using this Dollarama sign that I got for $3.50. I'm going to just pop off the little galvanized sign there and the little eyes. They're just tacks. I'm not going to be needing that today. It is a little wonky, so I'm going to make sure when I get my hot glue gun going that I firm it up a little bit. I'm also going to remove the bow and I'm going to give it just a couple of coats of my DIY white chalk paint focusing mostly around the edges of the rabbit. I'm using these wood garden stakes and my miter shears to make a little crate around the bottom base of the bunny. I don't want to use that green so I'm going to cover it up. I'm just going to use hot glue to apply these sticks all the way around the base making the crate. Once I have the front and the back then I'll be able to measure how long I need those little side pieces to be and then I'll do this all again for the second layer. This part's a little hard to explain but I hope you can see and get the idea of what I'm doing. I want to have a gap in between the garden stakes. So I'm using a popsicle stick as a little support and I'm going to cut that down so it doesn't stick out over the second stake. I'm going to glue it down onto the stake and then glue it into the first stake that's down at the bottom. I'm just going to let this play so you can see what I'm doing. Once I had the supports built, I glued the popsicle stick on the inside of the first stake that I laid down and just made sure that it was secure before I moved on with the rest of the project. So I cut out a piece of scrapbook paper. You can see it laying there and I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply it to the rabbit. Once I have the bunny stuck down really good, I'm going to just trim any of the excess paper. And then I want to use my sanding block to sand some of this paper away to reveal the white paint underneath. And I want to do this all the way around the edges of the bunny. Using my white DIY chalk paint, I'm going to give the green one good coat of the paint, making sure I get in all of the cracks and crevices and at the top and the bottom of each of the slats. I was lucky enough to find some of these beautiful twine carrots at the Dollar Tree. My Dollarama has some as well. They're a little bit larger and then of course they've got glitter on them. So I was really excited when I found these. I started painting them because I thought I would do them either in an off-white color or my burnt orange color, but you know what? I don't like it. The burnt orange kind of makes it look like mud, so I'm just going to stick with the regular color of carrots. But I am ripping out that fake grass that they have there and I'm using these little herb sprigs that I picked up at Dollarama. I'm going to put two of them together so I'm snipping off one of the little holes that attaches to the stem and I'm pushing the other one inside of it. Then I'm going to use a good amount of hot glue and push this into the top of the carrot. To distress the crate, I'm using a little chippy brush and some burnt umber acrylic paint and I'm going to dry brush it around the edges, on the cracks, on the top and the bottom, in between the slats like you see me doing here. I just want to dirty it up a little bit so it blends in better with the color and texture of the scrapbook paper. I used my Cricut Joy to cut out fresh pick daily in carrots five cents each and I just use the Dollar Tree contact paper. I love it for a transfer tape. It works really well and that whole roll is only a buck 25. Saves me so much money when I'm using my Cricut. If you saw me working with the transfer tape with my thumbs and fingers, what I like to do is just put a little bit of schmutz on it so it's not quite as sticky. And that really helps to not pull off the paint from my project when I'm peeling back the transfer tape. 
I'm going to use five of these carrots. Three are gonna go on the left-hand side and two are gonna go on the right-hand side. And I am going to be just putting them in standing straight up and down, just like they would be if they were growing out of the ground. I'm gonna use a little bit more hot glue just to make sure that they don't tip over. So a little bit on the crate or on the bunny will work just fine. Then I'm going to add some boxwood and again, have that standing straight up so it just looks sort of like some grass or blossoms in between the growing carrots. I added one solo wood flower and a beautiful lace ribbon around the rabbit's neck and I think this project turned out super cute. I'd like to take a quick second and give a shout out to all of my current subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for your continued support. If you are new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed and you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. This project evolved a few times before I finally got it right. I'm taking this antique sky paint, which is sort of a minty bluey green, and it's a Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint. And I'm just gonna give all the sides of this birdhouse one good coat. My first thought was to put a matching or coordinating scrapbook paper on the front of the birdhouse to match up with the green, but that green is just really hard to match. Anyway, I decided to take some of this really rustic wood chippy look scrapbook paper and I'm going to cover all four sides of the birdhouse with this just using a glue stick. Once the paper was dry, I just used my craft knife and just kind of cut away any of the excess paper on the corners. Then I grabbed my sandpaper, which is I believe a 60 or an 80 grit sandpaper. And what I wanna do is just make some of that green peek through. So I'll be sanding down the edges, pulling some of the paint up, sorry, pulling some of the paper up to reveal some of that green underneath. Using some needle nose pliers, I'm just going to twist it until I get that little piece of dowel out. I cut down a piece of artificial stem and I'm going to hot glue that into the hole so that becomes the perch for the birds. So you may have noticed that the top and bottom of the birdhouse were kind of cut down and kind of shabby looking. The reason I did that is because I wanted to have a sturdier base and a thicker top for the birdhouse. So I'm gluing them onto these little artist panels that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I believe these are the four by four sizes. So I put one at the bottom and now I'm going to glue the other one on top upside down so the flat part is facing the top. Now I started to paint the top of this ivory and when I got after just a few brush strokes I thought you didn't need to do this because all I wanted to do was keep sort of that natural wood color and distress it. But now that I had started painting it, I ended up having to paint the whole thing anyway because I wanted it to look cohesive. I didn't want something to be painted and something else not to be painted. So if I was to do this project over again, I would just leave these top and bottom pieces, their natural wood color, and just use the burnt umber to distress them rather than painting it. I've got some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss that I'm going to hot glue all the way around the bottom portion of the birdhouse as you can see me doing here. Make sure when you're doing this that you use something on your fingers so you don't burn yourself like I did. It wasn't bad burns by any means, but I just thought I would be able to get away with not using a finger protector. Boy, was I wrong. I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but I had totally forgotten to cut out the hole for the little birdies. So I'm doing that now with my craft knife. I found this tiny little nest with three tiny little eggs at a dollar store local to my area. So I'm going to take some of the antique sky paint and paint them just with one coat. And you can see some of the dark speckles coming through. So they look really natural. 
I'm going to embellish the birdhouse with some of these natural skinned solo wood flowers. And when I say skinned, that just means that they have some brown to them, which is a little bit of the bark. And I'm going to glue a couple of those. I'm going to use some small little pinkish ivory colored flowers that came in the stash of things that my friend Kimberly sent to me. And now I'm going to also add some of these little lamb's ear sprig stems that are from some lavender. And I'm just going to keep on working with this until I like it. For the final touch of this birdhouse, I'm adding some Spanish moss to the top corner. I'm going to hot glue the little nest back into it, add a few little greenery sprigs and some of those little pink flowers, and then put the eggs back in. So I really love how the birdhouse turned out, but I felt it needed something a little bit extra. So I tried a couple of pots, I tried some bowls, I tried a few different things, and I just came back to the spindle candlestick. I just think that is the best way to display a sweet little birdhouse like the one I just made. So I had this from a previous project I took it apart and I'm painting the bottom portion of it with that ivory color and then I'll distress it with the burnt umber but I'm going to leave the spindle the same color it's a beautiful deep mahogany brown and I think it just accents the birdhouse really beautifully I have a bunch of hardcover books that I haven't done anything with, so I decided to make this one over. It had originally a yellow cover, so I painted it with a few coats of my DIY chalk paint. And now I'm going over the whole thing with a glue stick. I decided to try glue instead of Mod Podge this time, because I'm using a full sheet of tissue paper. I'm not going to be cutting out the image for this one. I thought I would try just putting the whole image right over the book. And let me tell you, this worked amazing. So it might be something that I might look into for some other projects as well that are flat. I'm not sure that using all of this would work on a round project, but I'll be checking it out and letting you know. I'm just going to smooth everything out and make sure that it dries completely. I flipped it over and used my craft knife to cut off any of the excess. Then towards the spine, I used a ruler and I pulled off the extra tissue paper that I didn't need, just making sure that all of it came off because I'm going to do something different with the spine area. I used some sage chalk paint that I have and I just painted over the spine so just a little bit on top as you see here and then around to the other side as well. I'm going to cover the seam with this ticking stripe ribbon and just use some hot glue on either end to tack it in place. I'm going to make sure that it's a full coverage on the back side as well because this might be a book that I stand up for decor instead of lay down. I made a sweet little two-fingered bow and I'm going to hot glue that towards the bottom of the book just for something different. If you want to learn how to make a double loop two-finger bow, I have a tutorial listed down in my description box. I thought the spine needed something a little bit extra. I didn't like it just plain and so I printed off some French script on a piece of tissue paper and this time I'm using Mod Podge simply because there's some ripples on the edge of the book and I wanted to make sure that I had glue in all of the right areas. So I'm just going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge and then press the tissue paper in place. And I decided to go all the way around the book to the back as well. I did go over the top of this tissue paper with some Mod Podge, but I did not do that with the peony because it was stuck down really well and I didn't really want it to muck up. So I'm just going to go ahead and gently apply a little bit of the Mod Podge to the top of the script and then I'm going to use some sandpaper to just sand off the edges of the tissue paper. 
Then I just used my craft knife again to cut off the excess tissue paper. DIY number five is using this little thrifted urn that I picked up at the thrift store. It's just resin and it did have a few cracks in it that I just used some hot glue on the inside to hold them in place. But I'm going to be applying a little bit more of this antiquing wax, which is the bare brown wax, and that will camouflage some of the cracks as well. I'm using a chip brush to make sure I get into all of the nooks and crannies, and then I'm going to use a baby wipe to just kind of dab on top, get some of that wax off of the raised edges and make it stay in the nooks and crannies, and then it just looks really old and vintage. I haven't made a topiary in a while, so I decided to use this stick that I got from my mom. Her plant had died, so I told her we'll keep the stick because it'll be great for a topiary. I'm just using a little screwdriver to poke some holes into the styrofoam, and then I'm just going to push the stem into it and then use some hot glue to secure it in place. I'm using up a lot of the greenery that I already have. I've had these vine pieces for a couple of years in my stash and I thought, you know what, I've got too many boxes of greenery floating around. So I wanted to use up what I have and these were perfect. Some of them stood straight up like this first one, but some of them hang really nicely. So I decided to make this sort of a weeping willow kind of topiary. And so what I do is I trim the branches, I figure out how I want it to sit, and then I use hot glue to put it in place. Once it was all built, I looked at it and I decided that I still really didn't like how the bottom was looking. There was still a little bit of that green poking through. So I'm taking a stenciling brush from the Dollar Tree, a little bit of white paint that I'm tapping off the excess, and I'm just going to stipple some of the white on it. And this made it look absolutely beautiful. This is a really big coffee can and I cut off the bottom of it. The top was already open and you can see here that I can actually squeeze this with my hand. It's really not that stiff of a can compared to something like a soup can. So now I'm just going to take my mallet and this is a rubber mallet and I'm just going to start giving it a little bit of a smash. I had to do a little bit on the top as well just because the bottom was it just kept bouncing back on me. So <laughs> you'll see me here. Now I'm giving it some really good smashes. I started out a little gingerly, but now I'm just going to town and getting that thing smashed down. And there it is. I like to give all of the slick and shiny surfaces one good coat of a matte clear spray paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum brand because that's my favorite, but whatever you have is fine. If you don't have a spray paint, you could also do a coat of Mod Podge. I wanted to paint this a beautiful sage color, but I didn't have one that I was thinking in my head. So I had to mix two or three different colors. Actually, I think it was four by the time I got the color that I wanted. So a few different colors of green, and then I added a little bit of gray just to bring out a little bit more of a darker finish to it. If you have been with me for a while, you know I love to print things onto tissue paper and then attach them to my projects. This is a dragonfly and it's just a black and white image that I got from pixabay.com. The link to Pixabay is down in my description box and they're all free images that you can go and use for personal or commercial use. So what I'm doing here, instead of putting the Mod Podge on the can, I'm putting it on the wings first, just on the one side. I didn't wanna have any excess Mod Podge around 
around the dragonfly because that will change the color of the paint and I didn't want to paint the whole can with Mod Podge because that would totally change the color of it and it would give it a different sheen. I wanted this to be just a really nice dull sheen like the paint just to make it look old and more vintage. So I'm just going to be very careful and apply this with Mod Podge, put a little bit on the bottom place it down and then put some more Mod Podge on top making sure that it's totally secure. I just love black and white buffalo check and black and white gingham so I decided to line the bottom and the top of the can with one of these little ribbons that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use some hot glue and just put a dab here and there just to make sure it stays in place. I'm going to use the gingham ribbon for the hanger on this can, but I'm just taking the bottom of each of the ends and tying a knot in them. That's going to give the hot glue a little bit something more substantial to grip onto. Remember that when you're using hot glue with metal, it dries really fast, so you've got to work a little bit quickly. I'm just going to press that knot down into the hot glue until it sets. I'll do the same thing on the other side. If you want to be able to see the hanger once you've got something inserted into the can, you'll need to make sure that it's a little bit longer than you would normally do. Otherwise, you won't see the hanger at all. So it's totally up to you. I wanted to distress the front of this just a little bit. So I'm taking a really stiff old brush and some white chalk paint. And I'm just very carefully pulling it in from the corners there and then just brushing it very lightly across just to give it a little bit more of a distressed look. I love to use lavender in all of my decor, whether it's French country or farmhouse or modern farmhouse, whatever. I think lavender just screams farmhouse. If you have a different idea, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to know what flower would be your reason to scream farmhouse. So I'm just going to add little bits of lavender. I'm probably gonna just make them stand straight up and down because that's how they grow naturally. And I'm going to use a few different types of lavender just to give it a little bit more dimension. And I think this turned out really pretty. You'll have to let me know what you think about my take on the Tin Can Smash. In keeping with the buffalo check theme that I have for my video today, I am going to create a buffalo check ribbon rag wreath. I really love the look of those. They're so nice and fluffy. So I'm going to be cutting seven inches of the buffalo check ribbon and then I'm going to tie it just once onto the wire wreath form and then I'll just fluff it up. The wreath form I believe is from Dollar Tree. It's one of the 18 inch ones, but I did cut off the outer two rings. So these are just the inner two rings because I didn't want a huge wreath and I wanted to save that for something different. So again, just a seven inch piece of the ribbon and this is wired ribbon too tying it once and then just pushing it up against the rest of them. It's already looking so fun. Look at how fluffy it is and it's got some little strings and pieces hanging from it but I just think it's so quirky and fun. I have these beautiful purple pansies that were a thrift store find many years ago. They've just been sitting around in my stash since I haven't used them on display anymore. So I'm going to cut them apart and then wire them onto the wreath frame. I'm also going to use a little bit of hot glue just to tack the pansies in place so they don't flop around. I'm going to just put a few different rows on. So I'm starting with these taller ones here and then I'm going to just fill in the rest of the wreath form with a bunch of other pansies. When I got towards the bottom, I had some shorter stems, so I just bent them up a little bit, hooked them onto the wire frame and used hot glue to hold them in place. And this turned out really good. Look at how beautiful and full that is. I just love it. 
The pansies also had some of these little buds, so I'm going to just use some hot glue and place them all in through the pansies themselves. And then I'm going to add a little bit of some greenery that is almost the color of lamb's ear, but it's actually just greenery that I spray painted a little bit with some white paint. Just give it a little bit of a dusting and I think this wreath turned out really beautiful. I've got it hanging on my front door. It's really lightweight, but it stays on there perfectly. And I'm so happy with this wreath. I have some Dollar Tree vinyl projects for you today. They are spring related, they are farmhouse style, and I'm starting off with this cute little wooden bunny. He's got some embellishments that are nice, but not my style. So I'm going to remove everything on him and give him a makeover. Now, if you have a Cricut machine and you've tried the Dollar Tree vinyl, let me know how it went for you. I don't find it works too well. It's a little on the thin side, but if you don't have a Cricut, don't pass up the Dollar Tree vinyl. I got this awesome Buffalo Check vinyl from the Dollar Tree. I picked up a whole bunch of them when they were in stock, and I'm using this to cover my bunny. So you're not limited to using vinyl for Cricut. You can use it just like contact paper. And with the inexpensive price at the Dollar Tree, you've got lots of different options to choose from. I'm just going to flip the bunny over and use my scissors and craft knife to cut off all of the excess. The bottom of the bunny, so the stand of it, was a bright green. I painted it black just with my homemade chalk paint. And now I'm going to give it a little bit of a pocket. I want to be able to hold some carrots in there. So I'm taking a piece of drop cloth fabric and just hot gluing it into a nice clean square. And then I'll be gluing that right on top of the Dollar Tree vinyl to make a pocket. I'm folding in the edges of the drop cloth fabric and using hot glue to hold it in place. And I am trimming off the corner a little bit just because it's a little bulky and I don't want that to interfere with how it looks once I get it on the bunny. I still made the pocket a little too big, but I decided to just gather it down at the bottom a little bit so it would have a little bit of a poof to it. You can see me pushing it into the center like that. I'll just glue it down and it will look like it has a little bit of gathering down at the bottom. I pressed the two bottom corners down first and then just kind of crinkled it and glued the rest of it down too. Now the top portion is a little bit at an angle, so it seems a little bit wider than the bottom. So I just have to push it over and make it nice and straight when I glue it down. And that will give me a really loose pocket to put my carrots in. I'm going to try making a messy bow again. I am starting to get a little bit better with these. I'm using some black and white gingham ribbon and that came from Michaels. I've cut up a few strips of the drop cloth fabric, nice and thin. And I have this other brown ribbon, kind of looks like burlap, but it's really nice and soft. I got these glitter carrots at my local Dollarama store. They're a little bit larger than the ones you can get at the Dollar Tree. Of course, I don't like the glitter, so I'm using my honey brown paint and a stiff brush, and I'm just going to kind of pounce on it a little bit, paint up the majority of the carrot to cover up the glitter, but I do want some of that bright orange to kind of peek through. Gives it a little bit more of a dimensional look. Once the carrots were dry, I pulled out that green funky little paper and added some of this nice sort of asparagus fern or maybe it looks a little bit like rosemary, but I thought it was the perfect complement to the carrots. The last thing I did is add a little stamp to the drop cloth fabric and then I popped in those carrots and this project is done.
I've had this wooden tag sign in my stash for a while. You can see that it already had something done to it, but of course I didn't like that or it didn't sell. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a makeover. I'm just going to give it a couple of good coats of white chalk paint just to cover up mostly the dark grays down at the bottom. I'm going to use this wood cutout hello that I got from a local craft store and give it one coat of my walnut gel stain, just using a brush to apply it. I found a piece of scrapbook paper that looks like nice, beautiful brown wood, and I glued it with a glue stick just on the bottom third of the sign, as you see here. Now I'm taking my rough sanding block and I'm just going to sand off the edges to make it look more rustic. I'm also sanding all of the edges right down to the bare wood. I want some of that brown to peek through, so I'm going quite heavily and making sure that you can see the brown, especially on the corners and the edges. Using hot glue, I'm going to put the word down onto the sign just above where the brown paper is on the white paint and just off to the side a bit. I've got quite a few coats of paint on this white portion, so I'm taking one of these wood cutting tools that you can get in a pack at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to scrape off the paint to bring the brown through. I don't like to sand when I've got this much paint on there because you just end up getting all sorts of scratch marks. So this is a really neat alternative to getting some old and aged distress marks on your piece. I'm using the same walnut stain and just dry brushing it over the white just to blend in those marks a little bit more. To add that buffalo check look, I'm using some of this gingham ribbon from Michaels and I'm just going to glue it across the border between the brown paper and the white paint. I love the way this sign is looking. I think you could probably leave it this way, maybe just add a big bow on the top or just leave it plain, but I wanna dress it up a little bit with some of my solo wood flowers. I'm going to use the ones that are called skinned, which means that there's some brown bark on them as well. And I have these pretty little tulips that I got in the, my last order with them. I haven't used them. I think I've had them for at least, well, I don't know, <laughs> a long time. Anyhow, I'm just working through my stash of what I have left of my solo flowers, and I'm also going to add some of this little sort of turquoisey blue color into it. I think that just adds a little bit of a different spring look to this sign. Once I have the flowers the way I want them to look, you can see that it's kind of asymmetrical. I'm not an even sort of person when I do my florals and I'm going to be adding some of this boxwood. I took it outside and I gave it a light dusting of white spray paint to make it look more like a lamb's ear color. So I love the look of lamb's ear with the sola flowers. I think that's the perfect combination and I'm going to keep adding some of these little leaves until I get it looking the way I like. To bring in more of the buffalo check design, I'm using some of this gingham ribbon again. I'm cutting little pieces that are probably about two and a half to three inches in length, gluing them together to make little loops, and then I'm going to glue it inside the floral arrangement. And that's just going to bring out a little bit more of a coordination between the florals and the ribbon down underneath hello. Lastly, I made a sweet little two loop bow with some larger gingham ribbon and hot glued that into the corner of the florals. I love how this sign turned out. You'll have to let me know what you think too. I got this picture from the thrift store. It was $5.99. I'm going to give it one coat of Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer just so the paint will stick a little bit better. I'm just using a regular paintbrush that I picked up at the dollar store and my homemade DIY chalk paint in white. I'm loving all of the brush strokes. It's starting to look like a real homemade clay pitcher. 
So I printed off some of these sprigs in just black and white on some tissue paper and now I'm just going to cut them out. First I put a layer of Mod Podge on the picture where the image is going to go and then using my brush I pick up the image and place it onto the Mod Podge. Then I'm just going to work from the inside out making sure that my brush is always nice and moist with Mod Podge otherwise I'm going to risk tearing the paper and I don't want to do that. Then just smooth it out and pounce up and down on any of those bubbles and wrinkles and just be gentle and work with it until you've got it completely adhered to the picture. For those of you who are going to just get my free printables, check out my website link down in the description box and head on over to my website where I will have all of these free printables for today's video available for download. I used four or five different designs of these little sprigs and I filled the whole picture with them starting from the bottom and going up in different heights and sizes. I really love how this one turned out and I hope you do too. For this project, I'm using this 10 by 10 square frame that I picked up at Dollarama. It has a really firm cardboard backing, which I'm going to leave in, but I am going to paint the frame white. I'm going to give it just a couple of coats of my DIY chalk paint. I measured the inside of the frame and I'm going to use my miter shears to trim these little wood planks. These are just some garden stakes that I get every year at my Dollarama store and they're about the thickness of the jumbo craft sticks, which by all means you can use if they are long enough. I'm going to cut two at about nine and a half and then I'm going to cut another two a little bit shorter so they fit in between. I'm still sticking with my black and white theme, but I wanted to add a little bit of gray to the interior of this picture, and you'll see why in a few minutes. This paint is Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Parisian Gray. I created this free printable using three different images from pixabay.com. It's my favorite website to get royalty free and commercial and personal use images. And when I say royalty free, they are 100% free to use. All they ask you to do is link back every once in a while. So what I did was put these all together and now I just use my glue stick on all four corners and I'll place it right inside the frame. I'm going to use hot glue on the stakes and put the two longer ones on the top and the bottom and the shorter ones on the side. It turns out really beautiful and I'm really happy that I went with the Parisian Grey. It accents the stripes on the paper really well. No project of mine would be complete without some distressing. So I'm using this small chip brush and a little bit of black paint, very lightly just going over the edges, making sure that I have a little bit more in the corners, but I'm just going to distress all sides of this frame. Here's how it turned out. This candlestick is also thrifted, but it's seen a couple of different makeovers. So I decided to keep it black. It was already painted black and I'm going to just use some clear wax that has a little drop of white paint in it. I'm going to apply it really generously to the candlestick, making sure I get in all of the little grooves and holes and whatever. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe some of it off and dab some some of it away and the white will stay inside all of the cracks and it just turns out really beautiful. I've seen a lot of people use this technique and I thought I would give it a try. I've done it with some other colors. I've not ever done it with black base and then a white on top and I'm really loving how it's turning out. So you might see me doing a little bit more of this kind of style in the future. 
This is just a plastic pot that I had in my stash. I'm using the same rough brush and my DIY chalk paint in white, and I'm gonna give this a couple of coats. Then I'm gonna dress it up a little. Before I add any details to this pot, I'm going to make sure that the paint is going to stay. So I'm adding a layer of matte Mod Podge to seal it in. In my last video, I used these dot stickers from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to give this pot a little bit of detail so it would blend a little bit better with the candlestick. And on the candlestick, there are some sort of bead-like embellishments. So I'm just going to give this pot just on the rim. I'm gonna go all the way across on the bottom and then I'm gonna do another row on the top. I'm using the same technique that I did for my previous project using these dots. I just stuck them on with the sticky backing that they already have, but then I sealed them in with a good, really good coat of matte Mod Podge, and that will just make sure that they don't pop off. I felt like the pot was a little too white, so I'm taking some of my black chalk paint, which is also a DIY chalk paint. And if you're interested in that recipe, I've got it linked down in my description box. And I'm just gonna give this one good coat all the way around the rim. This candlestick has an indentation on the top. And although my pot looks like it fits, it just is a little bit too big. So I'm adding this wood disc from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue that on and that will raise up the bottom. So once I put hot glue on the disc, the pot will stick to the disc and I'll get a good secure hold. Using tissue paper and Mod Podge again, I'm going to attach this bee that is surrounded by a beautiful frame and on the back I have some French script. Again, all available on my website as free printables. I'm going to go ahead and add this on and then continue adding more of the French script until I have the whole pot covered. I'm going to use the white paint and clear wax mixture again, put it all over the top rim of the pot and then wipe it down and this will just bring everything together and look really beautiful. My first project is this little watering can that I picked up at the thrift store. It's a resin type, which is a really hard, hard plastic, but it has some really neat carvings in it and the color was okay, but I wanted to just brighten it up a bit. I'm using some folk art home decor clear wax and I just put a little drop of white chalk paint in it. I'm going to put this all over the watering can and then I'm just going to wipe it off using a paper towel and all of the white color is going to stay inside of those cracks and it turns out really pretty. Some of my favorite florals to use are Sola wood flowers. I'll have a link for them down in my description box, but they are absolutely beautiful. And what I love about it is that you can dye them whatever color you want. I took some orange paint, added a little bit of white and some water, and I've created this beautiful peachy color that I think is going to be so pretty against the natural color of the other flowers. I'm using some bits of green pool noodle that I had left over and I just wedged it down into the bottom of the watering can because it was tight enough that it's not going to move. I'm going to be keeping these little flowers on the bamboo skewers because that's going to make it so much easier for me to push that into the styrofoam. I wanted to create somewhat of a symmetrical round or half round on the top of this watering can, almost to make it look like a bouquet of flowers. What I do to the end of the bamboo skewers is use my snips and I cut them off onto an angle so they have a bit of a point, which is a little bit easier to push into the styrofoam. I also used one of these piercing tools from the Dollar Tree to poke a little bit of a starter hole into the foam, which made it much easier to push those flowers in. Mm -hmm. 
I've got all the flowers in there that I want and now I'm taking these tiny little sprigs of greenery and I'm going to hot glue them in between all of the flowers. I just want a little bit of greenery peeking out in between each of them. So wherever there is a joint where two flowers meet or where three flowers meet, that's where I'm going to be putting the greenery. And this just helps to bring it all to life. I thought about adding a ribbon bow to this, but then I changed my mind. I love it the way it is. I've been wanting to make a wagon wheel wreath for a really long time, and I know that Dollar Tree carries a wire form, but I wanted mine to be wood. So I'm using a 12 inch embroidery hoop, and I'm going to use both of the hoops for this one, and some of these six inch dowels from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna have to cut these down as well, and I thought I would give these dog nail trimmers a try. I've seen a few people say that these cut dowels and because they're a rounded edge, it's really easy to do so. I didn't find it so easy. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I think these dowels are just a little too thick for that. So I did switch over to my side cutters to finish the job. I'm using just a tiny little dot of hot glue on the end of the dowel to attach it to the embroidery hoop. I don't want a whole lot of glue seeping out because I want to be staining this later and the glue will of course not take the stain. Once I have them all together, I'm going to take this four inch wood round that I did pick up at the Dollar Tree in a pack of three, I believe. And I'm going to just measure to make sure that I have it in the right spot. And then I'm going to use hot glue to glue all of this down really well. Once that glue has dried, I can flip it over and add this other smaller piece of wood round, also came from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm set to start staining, and I think so far my wagon wheel looks pretty cool. To stain the wagon wheel, I'm using Dark Walnuts Gel Stain, and I'm diluting it a little bit with water because I want it to be absorbed right into the wood of the dowels and the embroidery hoop. I'm using these leaves that came off of a bush from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just on the back side of them paint them with my burnt orange paint. Now this is a honey brown color that comes from Americana and I think it's just the perfect color to mimic the underside of magnolia leaves. So each of these is going to get one good coat. Once those are dry I'm going to now paint the front just with some hunter green acrylic paint. I do have a little bit of talc in here to make it more of a chalk paint so I only need to do one coat. But you can see that with this color on the front and that orange color on the back they're turning into magnolia leaves. True magnolia leaves have a bit of a shine on the top of them so I am taking my matte Mod Podge and I'm going to give them a coat and this is just going to shine them up just a little bit to make them look like they are real magnolia leaves. Now that everything is dry, it's time to assemble the magnolia flowers, the leaves, and some extra little greenery onto the wagon wheel. I think I'm going to be putting it all the way around the side, so that's going to hide the little metal part. And I'm taking the blossoms right off the stems so I can glue them right down to the dowels and to the embroidery hoop. I love these magnolias. I do get these from Michaels, but I always make sure to to get them at their 40% off or their coupon price. You can see here the leaves that are sitting on the side, they have a little bit of a shine, so they do look like magnolia leaves. I'm going to continue adding some leaves and some additional other greenery, a few other blossoms, and then this project is complete. For my last project today, I'm going to upcycle this kind of cute but not so cute bunny that I got from Dollarama. The eyes are a little weird 
and the pink is just too pink. So I'm taking my favorite mushroom color, which is sort of a cross between beige and gray and a nice rough brush. And I'm gonna just paint this and make sure I get into all of those little nooks and crannies because there's so much texture on this guy. Once he's done, I really liked how he turned out. I found this sweet little bird at the thrift store for $1.99 and although he's super cute he just does not fit in with the theme of my decor today. So I'm giving him a couple of coats of the Parisian Grey Home Decor Folk Art Chalk Paint. I really love this paint. It does a super job of covering with one coat. Now because this guy is really slippery I think I did do two coats just to make sure I got full coverage. I had this color called Antique Sky from Martha Stewart and it was just really bright. It was a, a greeny blue kind of color, just something that I would never use in my crafting. I was always making something new with it. So I decided to just change the whole bottle. I added some more greens and some grays and that's what I'm using here to stipple on the little bird. I'm using this Craft Smart brush that I got at Michaels and it's a really rough brush. It's kind of like a chip brush but it's nice and round so it's really easy to get a nice texture. So I'm just pouncing up and down and I'm not even pouncing in all of the areas. I just want this green to kind of show up every once in a while. Once the green was completely dry, I'm gonna do the same thing with white paint. I'm not going to go all over the bird, but I just want it to have some little white speckling just to highlight it a little bit more. And I think he turned out really pretty. If you've been following me on my channel, you probably saw the video where I made over this sort of little buffalo check pattern. I decided that I didn't like it because I did it on an angle and it was a diamond pattern. So I'm going to cover this up with that same sort of sagey green chalk paint. I thought it would be really cute to add a little fabric pocket to the front of this house. So I'm just using some hot glue and some drop cloth and I'm going to create the little square that I want and then leaving the top open of course so it creates the pocket. I'll just hot glue it right onto the house. When you're working with hot glue and fabric, the fabric does get fairly hot. So make sure you're either using something other than your fingers to place it down or do what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of tapping with my fingers so I don't actually get too much heat onto my fingertips. I printed out this sweet little butterfly and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to apply it to the little pocket. I had to use quite a bit of Mod Podge and really use some pressure with my fingers to hold it in place until the glue had a chance to set onto the fabric. Then I added some more Mod Podge to the top of the butterfly, going over onto the drop cloth fabric just a little bit. This will ensure that the butterfly stays put. To add a little bit more of a French country feel, I'm just going to hot glue a little shoestring lace bow right on top of the butterfly. And then I'm just going to add a few little white lavender florals and I think this turned out really pretty. Stay tuned for the other side of the sign. When I'm making little signs for tiered trays, it just makes sense to have them double-sided. So this is the other side of my little house sign and it has a gray background. I printed off this design on regular printer paper and I'm going to cut it just about an eighth of an inch smaller so some of that gray paint peeks out. Using a glue stick is the best way to prevent any bubbles or wrinkles. So I'm going to make sure that I get all of the edges really well to make sure that this is going to stick. To make the paper look a little bit more rustic, I'm using the same Parisian gray chalk paint and a little chip brush just to drag across and make it look like this paper is really nice and old. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and rough up the edges of the paper to make them look a little bit older too. 
to fill in that sort of open space at the peak of the house. I'm using this little butterfly rubber stamp and I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle and I'm not pressing down really hard all the way because I want it to look a little faded. For this next little double-sided sign, I'm starting off by putting some glue on the back of one of these artist panels that you can get from the Dollar Tree. This one is the four and a half inch square. Now I'm just going to glue on this little printable that I got and I'm just making sure that I have all of the edges down the way I want them and then I'll just press it in place. Using the sanding block in a downward motion will get rid of all of the excess paper and will also leave it with a nice vintage feel. The other side of these artist panels have a really nice frame. I painted it with white chalk paint and now I'm going to add in this beautiful vintage bunny family printable. All of the printables that are available today in this video will be on my website. That link is down in my description box. I have a section of this little picket fence that I got at Michael's many years ago, and I've been using lots of it in my projects. I'm just going to pull out these little pieces, cut down a couple of them to a smaller size, and then I'm going to hot glue it all along the front of the frame. I glued them onto this little coffee stir stick so they'd be a little bit more steady. And then I painted the stir stick white to match the pickets. I thought it would be really sweet to add some of this little greenery in behind the picket fence, making sure not to cover up any of those sweet little bunnies. Then I took a little bit of a pick from the Dollar Tree and took off some of those little purpley pinky flowers that kind of look like lavender and added those in too. I forgot how much I enjoy making these little decor pieces for tiered trays. I usually sell them as a bundle, but for now I don't have an extra tiered tray, so I'll probably be doing a video on that in the near future. This time for distressing, I used a little bit of burnt umber to keep in with more of that vintage sepia kind of tone, which is more of a brown than a black. To make this look a little bit more French country or shabby chic, I'm going to create a tiny little messy bow that I'm going to glue on top of the sign so you can see it from both sides. I really love how this sign turned out. This year, for some reason, my local Dollarama store has been putting out these awesome wooden bunnies that stand up on their own. I've used a different one for another project, but I thought this one was absolutely cute. I'm going to remove all of his little accessories and then go around the outside edge of him with some candle wax. This is going to allow me to distress the outside of the bunny really easily without having to use sandpaper. I gave the rabbit two coats of my DIY chalk paint on the front and the back. And now I am just using a plastic scraper and I'm scraping off the paint where I had applied the wax. And you can see that it's getting a beautiful distressed finish without having to use sandpaper. I did apply some wax to the body of the rabbit, but I think just giving the two coats of paint didn't allow any of the wax to come through. So I'm just taking my Cricut spatula, probably not the best tool to use. You could use a screwdriver or any other sharp object that you have. And I'm just scraping off in some areas, some of the paint to give him more of a distressed look. I am going to be covering this bunny with all sorts of different layers of tissue paper printables. This is a French script that I put together available on my website under the free printables tab. And I'm just going to cut it into pieces and then actually tear it up a little bit. So I get my words sort of falling off the page as you can see here where I'm placing him. I'm just going to be using some Mod Podge to apply it and if you want a full tutorial on how I do my tissue paper printables I'll leave that link for you down in my description box. 
wherever there was some excess tissue paper, I decided to just fold it over onto the edges of the rabbit and that just gives it more of a high end look. So just taking some Mod Podge again and making sure that I just fold everything over and smooth it out with the brush. Usually I go on to pixabay.com and that's where I find a lot of the free printables that I use in my designs, but I was not able to find some pretty eucalyptus. So I went on to a different site that I have access to. It's called Creative Fabrica. There are SVGs and vector graphics and fonts and different images and clip art and there's tons and tons of things on there. I'm going to leave the link that I have for you down in my description box if you want to go and check it out. It is a subscription based website so be prepared for that if you wanted to go take a look but I really think it's worth it if you are a major crafter like I am. I'm adding the eucalyptus in the spots where I think it looks pleasing and then I'm going to do the same thing with some little lilac flowers. Everything that I use today has been printed off on tissue paper. Once the Mod Podge had all dried, I'm taking a small piece of sandpaper and going over the edges that I had distressed originally to pull that paint off. I want to make sure that that distressing is still visible and because I overlapped the tissue paper quite a few times in some spots, I'm just going to take that portion of the tissue paper off. I still have yet to master the messy bow. For some reason, I just cannot figure it out. There are some people out there who can make a beautiful messy bow. I have not been one of those people. But I think this green ribbon was a little too thick and too stiff. So I ended up taking it out and trying again and then it worked much better. I glued the bow to the neck of the bunny and now I'm just adding some of this reindeer moss to the bottom piece of wood. I just want to camouflage that a little bit so I'm going to add it all the way around the front, the sides and along the back. I wanted to add some florals but I didn't want anything to overpower the pattern that's already on the bunny so I'm taking some of these little baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I'm trimming them down really nice and short just going along the front a little bit in some groupings just to give that reindeer moss a little bit more of a pop. I love how this bunny turned out. For this spring French country DIY, I grabbed this scrap piece of wood from my garage and I'm just taking my sanding block and rounding out the edges so it's not quite so sharp. I gave it two coats of my DIY chalk paint and now I'm taking the same sanding block going all the way around the edges making sure that I get all the way down to the bare wood a little bit extra around the corners. I just want this to look really old and weathered. I'm going to add some scrapbook paper to the bottom of the board and I'm just taking the scrapbook paper and tearing it up so I get a nice rough edge on it. I don't want to have anything too straight on this. Again, I want it to look really old and weathered. So I'm just going to keep trimming the paper down by tearing it until I get the size I need. I'm just going to use a glue stick to apply it to the wood. I'm going to start at the top and then just smooth it out. And then I have another little piece of paper that's going to fill in the bottom section. And you can see here around the edges that it's exactly how I wanted it. I want it to look kind of off a little bit and not perfect. Next, I'm taking a tiny little piece of sandpaper and running it along the edge of the paper to give it a little bit even more distressing. This is going to pull up some of the paper and actually get it right off. And it's also just going to kind of fade out the print on the paper and make it look like it's really worn. I love using drop cloth in my projects and I'm still working on a piece that I picked up at Home Depot for 20 bucks. It was four feet wide by 15 feet long and 
I swear, I think I've had it for two years and I've just been working at it until I get rid of it. I'm almost done, so soon it'll be time for a new piece. I'm just going to cut this again a little smaller than the scrapbook paper because I want you to be able to see all of these details. I am using fabric scissors. You can see how easily they glide through the fabric. So if you are cutting any fabric, make sure you have a good pair of scissors. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling and you're probably going to wreck the fabric too. I frayed the edges of the fabric just by pulling on the threads and getting some of them out. It never turns out even, so don't be afraid to just trim your little frayed edges and make them look better. Okay, so you've seen me do all sorts of dupes of the IOD stamps and transfers. And I did say that they were pretty expensive and over my budget, but you know what? I decided to invest in the Sprig Stamps. They are my absolute favorite, and this is the first time I'm using them. So I'm just gently pulling off the cover sheet, and then I'm going to be cutting out the one that I want from the bottom sheet. I'm going to leave all of the stamps on the thick plastic that they're on here that you can see, and I'm going to be using that as my backing. So I really love this one in the center that looks like a lavender. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and then I'm going to do a test run on a piece of paper. For now, the ink I'm using is just from the dollar store, but I have a shipment of stays on black ink on the way and I'm hopeful that it will be here soon because I don't want to use this ink too much on my stamps. I want to use a good quality ink with them. Now I'm just going to lay it down, hold it in place, and then gently start pushing all of the leaves and everything down into place so I don't wiggle it. And when I lifted this up, I just about jumped out of my skin. It's absolutely gorgeous. Take a look at that. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely beautiful. I am so in love. I cleaned off the stamp and now I'm reapplying the ink to put it on my little piece of drop cloth. I think if I had better ink, it would have turned out a little bit deeper or maybe I just didn't add enough ink to my stamp, but I still really like how it turned out. I just used hot glue to apply it to the plank and then I added a couple of little shoestring bows and even though the flower looks a little bit faded, I still think it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm going to use two of these Dollar Tree houses and make them look like faux wood blocks, like they would be solid. The way I'm going to do that is just trace out a thin piece of cardboard and glue that onto the front of the box to make it look solid. I'm going to glue the cardboard on using my Weld Bond glue. This is the best glue ever. It sticks to anything and I wanted this to be nice and flat so that's why I didn't want to use hot glue. Sometimes the hot glue will make it raised up a little bit and I didn't want to have any gaps so I'm just going to lay this down, press it down really well and then give it about 10 minutes to set up with something heavy on top of it. Using my mushroom paint color, I'm going to paint the back of the houses, which is actually the front, so the piece of cardboard, and I'm just going to give it one good coat. I want this to kind of blend in to the whole look of these houses. I put together these really pretty French labels. I'm going to cover the whole front of the house with it just with a glue stick. Then I'm going to take my sandpaper and sand off the edges, putting a little bit more effort onto the paper itself so that can get worn and weathered off a little bit too. Then I used a finer grit sandpaper and went over more on the inside of the paper just to kind of sand it down a little bit more and then give that little bit of grain sack stripes at the top and the bottom a worn and weathered look too. I'm taking a baby wipe 
with a little bit of my walnut gel stain and I'm just going to wipe it very gently along the edges. It's going to darken up the paper, make it look a little bit more vintage with sort of a sepia kind of color. And then I decided that I would stain the sides of the houses as well, just to make it look a little bit more blended in. I'm really getting into the French country farmhouse look and I love how these signs turned out. This first project is just using an old wood plank. It's been stained this orange cedar color. So I'm just gonna paint it black first and then I'm gonna go over it very roughly with some white paint. I'm cutting out some drop cloth fabric, just a little bit shorter than the length of the plank and about seven to eight inches wide. I made sure to have a hemmed section, which I have folded up from the bottom. And now I'm just going to peel off some of the strands on the top to fringe it a little bit. Just using some hot glue, I'm going to glue down the piece that is folded up. I'm starting at the end and I'm going to glue it five times so I get five individual little pockets. If you want to measure so your pockets are exactly the same size, go right ahead. I am an eyeballer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of gauge where I want my seams to be, and that's where I'll add the hot glue. I'm using some thin twine to tie some simple shoestring bows. You can see two of them up in the left-hand corner there, and I'm just going to make them all the same size and then hot glue them onto the middle of each of the pockets. And I think this just adds a really sweet little touch. I decided to use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. And in that process, I ended up crackling the white paint a little bit. It's very subtle, but I think it just adds to the rustic look of this piece. My idea for these pockets was to put one sprig of lavender in each of them, and I think it looks absolutely adorable. To get this drop cloth onto my plank, I'm just going to be using some of these tiny little furniture tacks. They're really, really pointy nails and they're meant for doing upholstery. I have had them forever. They were in my stash from a really long time ago, so I'm just going to use some of those up. They went in really easily to the wood, but I did use my little tack hammer here just to nail them in and make sure that they were secure. I'm going to put three along the bottom and three along the top. Since there are two holes on either end of the plank, I'm going to take the same twine that I used to make the bows and feed it through the holes so I get three strands on the top of the plank. Then I'll just tie it off in the back. I did the same thing for the other holes on the other side of the plank. I'm using two of these little eye hooks to create a hanger for this sign. I'm going to just place the eye hook where I need it to be and use my small hammer just to tap it down a little bit to get it started. Then I'll just simply screw it into place and use my needle nose pliers if I need to to get it nice and tight. I'm starting with the same twine, tying off one of the ends, looping it through the other end, tying that off, and then coming back to the other one so I have a double strand twine hanger. I really love how this turned out. It was even better than what I expected, and I hope you like it too. For this DIY, I'm using this really big house sign that I picked up at my local Dollarama store. It's really nice and thick MDF, not the flimsy stuff that you can get at the Dollar Tree. No offense to that, but this is just a much sturdier sign. I took off the red paper and now I'm giving it one really good coat of my DIY chalk paint and then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to create a shiplap design, just drawing some lines in with my pencil. I'm starting in the center and then I'm just going to eyeball the sizes on either side. 
I like to use pencil when I'm doing shiplap lines because it's really easy just to take my finger and smudge that pencil line. If I didn't have enough of a smudge, I just added some more pencil to the tip of my finger and smudged it on again. I'm going to try my hand at hand drawing this using this fan paintbrush and a couple of other brushes. I'm using some Antique Sky Chalk Paint by Martha Stewart along with my favorite green which is the Eucalyptus. I dipped that fan brush very lightly into the light green and now I'm just pressing it onto the board and making the design that I want. So I started out making stems a little bit on a wave pattern like you can see here but then I remembered that lavender doesn't grow like that lavender grows more straight so I did end up using some of these wavier lines for the leaves and then did some straight stems at the end I also used the eucalyptus color in the same manner just dipping it very lightly and then just going along the same lines that I did with the light paint I'm sorry that you can't see how this is turning out. I should have filmed this in a different angle. I will remember that for next time, but you can see the results. I'm using a little chip brush and I have three different colors, a light blue, a navy blue, and a lavender. And I'm blending those together and then dry brushing on a lavender shape. I'm just bouncing up and down with my stenciling brush or my chippy brush and just making it deeper and darker in the center and lighter towards the outside. And I think this is a really easy way to achieve a soft watercolor look. Then I added some smaller ones lower down on the branches because Lavender doesn't always come up all at once. There's always some little ones coming up in between. To give the flowers a little bit more dimension, I took just some lavender. I didn't clean the brush yet. And again, I'm just pouncing off the excess. And then I'm just going to go in the center a little bit of each of the flowers, just giving it a little bit more of a different color accent. And that just adds some dimension to the blooms. Using the clay color from Martha Stewart Vintage Chalk Paints and the similar type of brush, but it's not the fan brush, it's just a real thin brush. I'm doing the same type of technique on a mason jar that I've already penciled out. So I'm just going to go and draw the outline of it, just again, just using the brush and kind of stippling up and down to get my line. And then I'm going to go ahead and start blending it in and adding some shadows. And I think this turned out pretty good. I like how it looks. It looks homemade. It looks hand drawn. And I've seen a lot of farmhouse high end decor that have images on them that look hand drawn. So I think I'm happy with how this turned out. You'll have to let me know what you think. If you like this design, I'm going to have something similar available as a free printable on my website. I wrote the word farmhouse down at the bottom in pencil first and now I'm going over it with my black oil based sharpie marker. I'm going to thicken them up a little bit and add some little ticks to the end of it so it looks really nice and rustic. Using this same little chip brush, I dunked it in a tiny little bit of white paint and now I'm just dry brushing a little bit over the letters in a stippling motion just to give them more of a worn out look. I purposely left the roof till the end because I wasn't sure if I was going to paint it or not, but I decided that it did need to have a nice black roof. So I'm giving it one good coat of my black DIY chalk paint and then I'm going to go over it with some white and distress it. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to my channel for some new and upcoming spring DIYs. Don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else I have to share. Bye for now.